Welcome back to Market on Close. Stocks uh, hovering around a hunch today. Last week, we saw momentum winners caught the bid the best. Joining us, Sylvia Jablonski is going to ID some. She's the CEO and Chief Investment Officer at Defiance ETFs. Sylvia, great to see you again. Welcome back to the show. Thanks so much for having me, Oliver. Great to be here. So last week, I was looking at some of the factors uh, kind of breaking down the market bounce, and it seemed like stuff tied to momentum really led and caught the bid the best. Is that what you saw throughout your guys' funds? Yeah, that's exactly right. I think, you know, the, the names that got hit the hardest that, that Monday were some of those momentum types of names, the tech names, the the AI players, the semiconductors. But I think, you know, some of the some of the carry trades, some of the the leverage unwind um, coupled with you know, that the passing of panic about the jobs numbers when we saw additional data looking a little bit better, I think kind of chilled the markets out a little bit. And and we kind of went back to, you know, close to back to normal to business. But it's also August and September, volatile months. You know, let's see what happens. I don't think the macro story has changed, though, in the last week or two. I'm still bullish on those names. OK, uh, last week we saw the uh, health care winners like Eli Lilly do really well. I know you guys have got a few ways to target that trade. Tell me about it. Yeah, so we actually launched um, LLYX, which is a two times daily levered Eli Lilly ETF. And, you know, the reason for that is just around the massive amount of attention and, and interest in that stock. So not only are they taking the lead with GLP ones, they've managed to get rid of some of their um, supply constraints. So they're able to kind of meet current demand and future demand. So essentially, they're able to fuel their margins further. Um, sales on Manjaro did very well. You know, EPS was solid. It's just a stock that continues to to pay and reward investors for the growth that they're investing in. Um, pays a nice dividend, you know, defensive stock, aging baby boomer population, all of that kind of backdrop is is still there with the stock. But it's it's just, you know, Zephown and Majaro have been awesome for that company and it's holding up. Yeah, the uh, uh, numbers are pretty incredible. They even really leapfrogged over Novo Nordisk in terms of performance. Yeah. Uh, so the levered funds, uh, how are they looking so far? I mean, do they function pretty straightforward, pretty easily, uh, or do they need to pick up a lot of liquidity and action for, to really get going? I mean, it's, it's pretty simple to run it, right? Yeah, it's pretty easy. It's just two multiple, you know, two multiplied by the daily performance of Eli Lilly on a daily basis, and because that stock is so liquid, you know, it makes the ETF essentially liquid. So Got investors, it. market makers, whoever it might be, are just using that that you know behemoth of a stock to hedge. So it's doing quite well. It's been around. This is day three, and it's trading really nicely out of the gate. So we think that there's a lot of retail interest in that name. What have you guys noticed in terms of behaviorally how people use the single stock levered funds? Do they get in and out, or are these people that like it and they park in there? You know, remains to be seen, right? So I, I think this stock is one, it's only been out for a couple of days, right? So we can't really talk too much about the turnover. But from my my past in history and levered inverse ETF products, I think although the message is out there that they're daily tradable products, I think that, you know, the average kind of retail person, when there is low volatility, when there is a trend and you don't have range bound, which unfortunately we have seen over the last couple of weeks, they tend to hold them for longer periods of time and, and you know, compounding and rebalance tends to work in their favor in those types of markets. So it remains to be seen if the stock just kind of, you know, keeps puttering upward with, with low range bound, I think you'll see extended holding periods, but, you know, we would say just keep an eye on it every day. It's a real mix, though. You know, you, you, you think it's just day traders. It's really not. There's there's definitely some long term trend conviction holders in those names. Yeah. OK, I bet uh, so far it seems like they've uh, warranted it. They've justified it. What about from the AI yeah. and the tech stuff, uh, Sylvia? Obviously, we need NVIDIA to keep leading and that group to hold up if we're going to keep the market somewhere within reach of highs. Yeah, so we know the story there, right? I think that although I would argue that Mag Seven earnings were were argue, you know, great, um, they didn't meet necessarily what the hype was or what the hype was wanted to be for expectations on the street. And you know, people are a little bit concerned about their spending and whatnot. So I think this, like, the story for me is I'm glad they're spending because it takes spend to actually build something. And I think that AI is still in its infancy. It's going to start playing out. We still haven't heard about how. You know, AI change transform XYZ firms' profits, whether it's in healthcare, defense, um, housing, banking, whatever it might be. So I think it's it's very much in its infancy and it's going to take some time to play out. We know that NVIDIA is running water for it. We, we know companies like Broadcom are running water for um, the teleconnectivity part of it, the 
you know, 5G, 6G part of it. There's a lot of these companies that are, you know, just poised to grow. But I think in the near term, just your comment about like everyone's waiting for earnings, NVIDIA has to have a good earnings call or I think we're in for a pullback again. Okay. Um, which, you know, not so bad, but yeah, uh, not what the market wants. <laughs> bar's going to be high. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. Hey, real quick, your guys' is all quantum fund, is that AI by proxy or uh, take me through that real quick? Yeah. It's AI, machine learning, and supercomputing. So the future of, of AI is going to require data to be processed quickly, and you need quantum computers to do it. So that's our AI machine learning trade. Yep. All right. Uh, in fact, we're working on building a quantum plant here in Chicago. All right. <laughs> awesome. Can't yeah. wait to see it. <laughs> uh, downtown. All right. Uh, well, south side. Uh, thanks, Sylvia. Appreciate it. Make sure Good you have a lot up. of air conditioners. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, Sylvia Jablonski, CEO, Chief Investment Officer at Defiance ETFs. All right. L-L-Y-X to get some levered exposure uh, to the weight loss trade in Eli Lilly.